God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth, her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace and dude. I am worn out with crying, with longing for my God. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen to my neck. I have sunk into the mud of the deep, and there is no foothold. I have entered the waters of the deep, and the waves overwhelm me. I am wearied with all my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes are wasted away from looking for my God. More numerous than the hairs on my head are those who hate me without cause. Those who attack me with lies are too much for my strength. How can I restore what I have never stolen? O God, you know my sinful folly. My sins you can see. Let those who hope in you not be put to shame through me, Lord of hosts. Let not those who seek you be dismayed through me, God of Israel. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. When I afflict my soul with fasting, they make it a taunt against me. When I put on sackcloth in mourning, Then they make me a byword, the gossip of men at the gates, the subject of drunkard songs. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am worn out with crying, with With longing for for my God. God. I needed food, and they gave me gall. I was parched with thirst, and they gave me vinegar. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favor. In your great love answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Rescue me from sinking in the mud. Save me from my foes. Save me from the waters of the deep, lest the waves overwhelm me. Do not let the deep engulf me, nor death close its mouth on me. Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer quickly, for I am in distress. Come close to my soul and redeem me. Ransom me, pressed by my foes. You know how they taunt and deride me. My oppressors are all before you. Taunts have broken my heart. I have reached the end of my strength. I looked in vain for compassion. For consolers, not one could I find. For food they gave me poison. In my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I needed food, and they gave me gall. I was parched with thirst, and they gave me vinegar. Seek the Lord, and you will live. As for me in my poverty and pain, let your help, O God, lift me up. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving, a gift pleasing God more than oxen, more than beasts prepared for sacrifice. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. For God will bring help to Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah, and men shall dwell there in possession. The sons of his servants shall inherit it. Those who love his name shall dwell there. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Seek the Lord, and, and you, you will live. The Lord will teach us his ways, and we will follow in his footsteps. From the first book of Maccabees, Judas and his brothers said, Now that our enemies have been crushed, let us go up to purify the sanctuary and rededicate it. So the whole army assembled and went up to Mount Zion. They found the sanctuary desolate, the altar desecrated, the gates burnt, weeds growing in the courts as in a forest or on some mountain, and the priests' chambers demolished. Then they tore their clothes and made great lamentation. They sprinkled their heads with ashes and fell with their faces to the ground. And when the signal was given with trumpets, they cried out to heaven. Judas appointed men to attack those in the citadel while he purified the sanctuary. He chose blameless priests devoted to the law. These purified the sanctuary and carried away the stones of the abomination to an unclean place. They deliberated what ought to be done with the altar of holocaust that had been desecrated. The happy thought came to them to tear it down, lest it be a lasting shame to them that the Gentiles had defiled it. So they tore down the altar. They stored the stones in a suitable place on the temple hill until a prophet should come and decide what to do with them. Then they took uncut stones according to the law and built a new altar like the former one. They also repaired the sanctuary in the interior of the temple and purified the courts. They made new sacred vessels and brought the lampstand, the altar of incense, and the table into the temple. Then they burned incense on the altar and lighted the lamps on the lampstand, and these illuminated the temple. They also put loaves on the table and hung up the curtains. Thus they finished all the work they had undertaken. Early in the morning on the 25th day of the ninth month, that is, the month of Chislev, in the year 148, they arose and offered sacrifice according to the law on the new altar of holocaust that they had made. On the anniversary of the day on which the Gentiles had defiled it, on that very day it was reconsecrated with songs, harps, flutes, and cymbals, all the people prostrated themselves and adored and praised heaven who had given them success. For eight days they celebrated the dedication of the altar and joyfully offered holocausts and sacrifices of deliverance and praise. They ornamented the facade of the temple with gold crowns and shields. They repaired the gates and the priest's chambers and furnished them with doors. There was great joy among the people now that the disgrace of the Gentiles was removed. Then Judas and his brothers and the entire congregation of Israel decreed that the days of the dedication of the altar should be observed with joy and gladness on the anniversary every year for eight days, 
from the 25th day of the month Chista. After the feast called Pentecost, they lost no time in marching against Gorgias, governor of Idumea, who opposed them with 3,000 foot soldiers and 400 horsemen. In the ensuing battle, a few of the Jews were slain. A man called Dosithius, a powerful horseman and one of Bachinor's men, caught hold of Gorgias, grasped his military cloak and dragged him along by main strength, intending to capture the vile wretch alive, when a Thracian horseman attacked Dosithius and cut off his arm at the shoulder. Then Gorgias fled to Marissa. After Esdras and his men had been fighting for a long time and were weary, Judas called upon the Lord to show himself their ally and leader in the battle. Then, raising a battle cry in his ancestral language and with songs, he charged Gorgias's men when they were not expecting it and put them to flight. Judas rallied his army and went to the city of Adullam. As the week was ending, they purified themselves according to custom and kept the Sabbath there. On the following day, since the task had now become urgent, Judas and his men went to gather up the bodies of the slain and bury them with their kinsmen in their ancestral tombs. But under the tunic of each of the dead, they found amulets sacred to the idols of Jamnia, which the law forbids the Jews to wear. So it was clear to all that this was why these men had been slain. They all therefore praised the ways of the Lord, the just judge who brings to light the things that are hidden. Turning to supplication, they prayed that the sinful deed might be fully blotted out. The noble Judas warned the soldiers to keep themselves free from sin, for they had seen with their own eyes what had happened because of the sin of those who had fallen. He then took up a collection among all his soldiers, amounting to 2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for an expiatory sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had the resurrection of the dead in view. For if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again, it would have been useless and foolish to pray for them in death. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward that awaits those who had gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead, that they might be freed from this sin. There are some who have died a godly death. They shall receive the splendid reward which awaits them. It is a holy and pious thought to make atonement for the dead, so that they might be freed from their sins. They shall receive the splendid reward which awaits them. From a sermon by St. Leo the Great, Pope. Although the universal Church of God is constituted of distinct orders of members, still, in spite of the many parts of its holy body, the Church subsists as an integral whole, just as the Apostle says, we are all one in Christ. Nor is anyone separated from the office of another in such a way that a lower group has no connection with the head. In the unity of faith and baptism, our community is then undivided. There is a common dignity, as the Apostle Peter says in these words, and you are built up as living stones into spiritual houses, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices which are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And again, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of election. For all, regenerated in Christ, are made kings by the sign of the cross. They are consecrated priests by the oil of the Holy Spirit, so that beyond the special service of our ministry as priests, all spiritual and mature Christians know that they are a royal race and are sharers in the office of the priesthood. For what is more kinglike than to find yourself ruler over your body after having surrendered your soul to God? And what is more priestly than to promise the Lord a pure conscience and to offer him in love unblemished victims on the altar of one's heart? Because 
Through the grace of God, it is a deed accomplished universally on behalf of all. It is altogether praiseworthy and in keeping with the religious attitude for you to rejoice in this our day of consecration, to consider it a day when we are especially honored. For indeed, one sacramental priesthood is celebrated throughout the entire body of the Church. The oil which consecrates us has richer effects in the higher grades, yet it is not sparingly given in the lower. Sharing in this office, my dear brethren, we have solid ground for a common rejoicing, yet there will be more genuine and excellent reason for joy if you do not dwell on the thought of our unworthiness. It is more helpful and more suitable to turn your thoughts to study the glory of the blessed Apostle Peter. We should celebrate this day above all in honor of him. He overflowed with abundant riches from the very source of all graces. Yet though he alone received much, nothing was given over to him without his sharing it. The Word made flesh lived among us, and in redeeming the whole human race, Christ gave himself entirely. Jesus said to Simon, I tell you most solemnly that you are Peter, and I will build my church upon this rock foundation. And the powers of hell will never overcome it. For all eternity God's church stands firm. And the powers of hell will never overcome it. Let us pray. God, our Father, you will never allow the power of hell to prevail against your church, founded on the rock of the Apostle Peter. Let the prayers of Pope Leo the Great keep us faithful to your truth and secure in your peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.